Hey guys, welcome to another House of Lasers tutorial, tips, tricks. Um, we are going to talk about Lightburn's um, power scaling feature. Um, after we posted our materials test pattern, we realized that a lot of you guys don't know this hidden feature. So we want to discuss it real quick and show you how you can use it and what it's all about. So real quick, I'm going to draw a square and then I'm going to uh, basically try to make a an array like the power grid um, that I made for the test patterns, uh, the test material patterns. So if we do a couple of these and space them out a little bit and a couple of these and just click OK. So we have all of these boxes and typically if they're all colored black you're not going to be able to change the power on them uh, you would have to create layers upon layers to get these to do different things so I mean, you would be spending a lot of time going through and adjusting all of the powers and speeds for each one so what we did and what what lightburn has done and what how we took advantage of it for the power grid was we selected let's say we selected this row here and we made it all blue and then we selected this row here we made it all red and then the top one's black so we can pick this one and say that we were making it 20 speed and we want it 100 percent power um, Typically, your minimum power is going to be zero or at least the firing point of your laser. Um, so make sure you have that adjusted. This is for cutting and for engraving for the power scale adjustment. Um, from what Lightburn says, the optimum uh, setting for this is right about the threshold of firing the laser. Um, so now if we go to the second row and we wanted this row to be... 40 inches per second and then again it's at a hundred percent and then this one we could do it at we'll just leave it right there we'll leave it at four inches per second uh, everything else is correct so if we look at preview right now we have some of them set to line so let me set them all to fill and now let's take a look at it. Uh, shade according to power. And they're all at 100%, so it's not going to change anything. Now what we can do is we can click on each individual shape and change it. So regardless of the fact that this is 100%, um, let me just type this out real quick. So let's say that we wanted this to be 100. Uh, the next one to be... 80, the next one to be 60, 40, oops, 40, 20, not 23, 20. Okay, and let's just stretch that out so it's over there. Like so, you get the idea. And because I'm slightly anal retentive. All right, so you get the idea. So what we could do, even though that these shapes are all different colors, um, different fill settings, we can pick one and go to our shape properties. And if you don't have shape properties on, just make sure you have the window checked over here. And the way that I have mine laid out um, works best for me. I have all of my optional windows up here. I have this laser communication window down here as a standard. Um, my layer palette, color palette, is off to the left here because I know on Windows, at least, uh, if you have it down low and you optimize or you uh, maximize your window, you end up losing it. Uh, and then you have to open and close your window and do all fun, weird stuff. Um, so let me select this. and. We're at 100%, and right now the power scale is at 100%. Um, if we go to the next one, we want this one to be 80. 
So we want it to be 80% of the 100, so we would just type in 80. And this one we want to be 60. And these we want to be 40. And then 20. So these are all going to be engraved at different speeds. So each color is a different speed. Um, but each row is going to follow their percentage values. And if we do a quick preview, you see now the shading is different. And then, of course, you have to have this shading according to power to be able to see exactly what's going on. But this is one way that you can achieve different things um, without having to have a ton of different layers. Uh, for example, uh, let's, let's pull this one in, and I'll just show you real quick. Let's copy my image. Paste. Paste. There we go. We have our shape in here, or our image in here. What I'd like to do is trace it. So Option T for me. Cancel. Or right click. Trace image. Uh, that looks good. Now let's fade image to make sure our lines are good. Lines look great. And pull that away and delete it. And now we will ungroup. Right click, ungroup. And let's say I want it to look three dimensional. Uh, so we, we want to change the shading. And typically, of course, like we just mentioned with the power scale, um, uh, you would have to go in there and change every single one of these colors um, or at least have three three different colors to get the three-dimensional effect uh, by shading. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to leave these outer ones. Um, th these will be our darkest shaded area. Um, I'm going to grab all the top ones because I'm going to have this be the lightest as if the the lighting was shading this cube from the top right. Um, so I have all those selected and you can see over here my power scale is 100. Uh, I'm going to change this to 12. Enter and then since the lighting's coming from the top and kind of right, well, we'll give these a lighter shade uh, but they will be engraved. All right, so we have all of the uh, front right facing ones selected and power scales 100. Well, let's make it uh, 40. Enter. Now, let's see what this gives us. All right, so now when it goes to engrave, even though we don't have three different layers, we do have three different power levels. Uh, and this is just an easy way, uh, instead of having to go in and have multiple runs, because, of course, when you have multiple layers, it's going to engrave one layer, and then it's going to engrave another layer, and so on and so forth. Um, with this, it's engraving it and adjusting the power as it goes. So you can achieve this entire graphic in one pass with multiple power levels. Um, I hope that's better explained, and now you know why our... Test pattern works. Uh, let me go to my art library real quick and get my test file. And I'll show you on that one. Uh, let's see, pull that one over. And then now you understand, if I go to shape properties, you'll see that uh, this one's set to 10, 20, 30, and so on. So that's how we were able to achieve these different shading levels, this, this different power levels without changing the colors. Uh, otherwise, there would be a ton of different layers and it would just be obnoxious. But uh, once again, Lightburn pulled off some cool stuff and uh, very helpful and useful depending on what you want to do. All right, guys, I hope this helped some of you. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, tell all your friends about House of Lasers. We are working real hard to get you more discounts, more knowledge, and, uh, and, and newer technologies. Uh, talk to you soon.